Hello, I'm Liam from Lazarus Personal Training. I am the founder of the No Shoe Crew and today is your sweat on session. What you will need today for the warm up is a red resistance band and for the workout you need a kettlebell that's an appropriate way for you. I've got an eight, whatever you have or whatever you use will do fine. What we're gonna go through is a progression and we're gonna build up a movement into one big final movement that uses all of his body. But to begin with, we're gonna get into his warm up. We've got three movements. We've got 1990 switches, we've then got band dislocators, and then we're gonna go into a tricep stretch with the kettlebell. So to begin with, we're gonna sit down onto the floor. Once we're sat down, hands go towards the back of the mat, knees are up at 90 degrees, and then we're just gonna switch inside and out. As we're moving through this, you want to push up into your hands so your bum is almost lifted off the mat a little bit. Reason being, and what you'll probably find if you're not doing that, you've shuffled down the mat. Just having a bit of tension in your hands, one, opens up the shoulders, two, stops your movement. From there we come up to his feet. We're going to band dislocators. With the band dislocator, you want to take hold of the band, arms left. So it's at the ends, arms are straight, it comes from the waistband, up and over, into the lower back, and then back to the start again. This is one of my go-to shoulder movements. I think it's really good for mobility, because not often do we end up circling through the shoulder joints. Long, deliberate movements. And what I'm trying to do is extend my arms away from my body. If you're going, like that, like you're pulling on like a t-shirt, you've got too much tension in the band, and you need to take a little bit of tension out of it to make sure you can move smoothly. And then from there, with a kettlebell, I want you to bring it up and over the shoulder, and then you're just gonna like sit and stretch out, stretch out the arm in this position. This is just getting us ready for a racked position. Now this is over the point or we're going past the point of motion. So we stretch past it so then when we go into it we feel comfortable. And then from there, switching sides. What you might find is that this position to begin with feels a bit uncomfortable. There's too much stretch coming out of the tricep and the hand's not in a great position. What you can do is hook underneath it to give the kettlebell a little bit of support so it takes a bit of pressure out. And here I'm dropping my shoulders, core stays tight and arm stays in a good position. From there, we go back down to the mat again. 1990 switches should feel a bit, move that kettlebell out of the way, should feel a bit of extra range of motion. Should feel it moves a bit smoother. We're testing this internal and external rotation of the hips here. Talked about this in the previous video. Often we don't get a chance to move outside of that plane of motion. Coming back up to your feet. You go band dislocators. If you don't have a band, you can do this stood against a wall. One arm moves and then the other arm moves. So just as a demonstration, if you were stood next to a wall, I'd go into a split stance and I'd go arm around for that arm to come back forward again. But ideally, you're going to grab yourself one of these red bands. Aldi, of all places, had one of these when I went in for a shop. But my protein, pretty much anywhere that you go online, and you want to search red resistance band. But don't do what I did once, which was buy a load of bands and then realise that they were the shorter hip circles, and now they're just sat in a wardrobe at all. Again, we've gone back into this stretch position, just letting the elbow sit up and high. You might find that this mobility is quite hard to begin with. Absolutely fine, we should keep working on it and get comfortable. Again, I'm setting myself up into position. Everything's tight from my feet up to my shoulders. And then this is just stretching into the back. And from there, we're going one last time. Sat down, hands apart into the back, fingertips are away from the body, side to side. What I know on this is that 
my left leg feels different from my right leg, just as a general. You want to be aware of that too. You want to be aware of how you move around and what feels comfortable for you. Back into these dislocators. Again, controlling this movement. Arms are reaching away from the body. Core stays tight. And then from there, back into this racked position where we're just sitting here. Again, over the shoulder. Let the elbow stretch up. Every time that you've done this position, it should feel slightly easier to get into. Which is good. It's what we want. And switch over. Here as well, just pulling my neck away, you get a little bit of stretch coming out of the trap too. So what we're going into is some single limb stuff with the kettlebell which builds up to a big motion. We're going 30 seconds on each side and there's a quick 10 second transition through it. So we are constantly going. But the good thing about this is as one side is working, the other side is resting. So the movements that we're going into, let me see if I get this right off the top of my head first time. We've got a kettlebell deadlift with a single arm from the floor. From there we go into a kettlebell row position again from the floor. We then come into a kettlebell clean position, that gets quite hard if you're not used to that motion. A kettlebell press position. From there, we hit a wrapped lunge position, and then finally, it's a clean press lunge from the floor. Each one of those is 30 seconds, and then there's a 10 second rest, we take 30 seconds after that, and we repeat again, so we do two full rounds out of that. I am thoroughly impressed that I remembered that off the top of my head. We'll see how this workout goes. So, without further ado, let's begin. So for the kettlebell deadlift, we are stood Hips go back and down, hand comes on and we stand up tall, touches the ground and stands up. 30 seconds of work, we're opening from the hips and every time that we come up to the top, we squeeze the glutes. Couple of seconds left, we take 10 seconds to switch position, catch a quick breather and then we go again. It's not 10 seconds, it's 5 seconds. What am I saying? Ready? Let's go. And again, with this, moving from the hips, I'm going to turn so you can see it. So my chest comes down, my chest comes up. But it's the hips that are driving. After this, we're going into a roll position. So I'm going to stay on this side so again you can see how that's moving. Every time we want to touch the floor, if you struggle touching the floor, get a block underneath it. Into that row position, set up from the hips, chest stays tall, we pull into the side. I've used this one in a previous workout. In the kettlebell ladder workout, this movement came up. Again, feet put firm into the ground. I'm sat back with my hips. My back stays straight and I'm pulling my shoulder blade back and down. I'll come forward this time so you can see it from this front position. Ooh, I am being vicious with this rest time. So as one side is working, the other side is resting. However, you're not resting, so the heart rate and breathing rate should feel like it's coming up. The next thing that we go into is a kettlebell clean. This is a complicated movement, so don't worry if you only get one or two reps out of it because it doesn't feel normal. The kettlebell clean will come from the floor and into this racks position. So from here it's a deadlift and it pops up and under. What I want you to think about is that the elbow shoots under. My grip is quite loose. And I'm turning through it. What you might find is if that your kettlebell has a rubber handle on it, it will feel more difficult to do this motion. Think like you're about to elbow someone, and you're gonna go 
Pop. And just catch him under the nose. That's a bit vicious, is that? It's got a bit dark there. Oh, five seconds goes quickly. One side will move better than the other side. It's just how his body tends to work if we've got a dominant side. For me, I know my left doesn't move as well as my right. And there's no rush into this. I'm not looking for it to be as many reps as possible. It's so whatever you get out of it. That last one was bad. Press position next. So this comes up from the rack position, presses up and overhead. Core stays tight, feet are pointed into the ground, and I'm pressing almost up and back. So from here, I'm getting a big extension overhead, rib cage wants to stay down and tight. If you need to, you can add a bit of a leg drive into it. My ankle just cracked massively. Switching sides, be ready to go. Again, shoulders set, grips firm, and we press. The kettlebell handle wants to be sat across the palm of the hand. So then, it's in a comfortable position. If it's too high, and it's onto the fingertips, you'll feel like your wrist is bending out of place. Ideally, that's sat straight. The next movement that we go into is this reverse lunge. This is a vicious workout. Switch it again. It now stays in a racked position. Stood, we come back, knee touches the ground, and it stands up. When we come into this reverse lunge position, every time that I stand up, I'm locking my left leg out. And every time that I stand up, it's almost like I'm about to step forward with my other foot. A couple more seconds, then we switch sides. Switching over, upright and tall, foot's planted, away we go. You want to search for stability with the foot, so it wants to lock into the ground, and that knee wants to stay in line over the toes. If you're struggling, you'll find that the knee does this and collapses in. Reset it and drive up. Under 10 seconds left on this one. From here, we're gonna go into that full body motion. So, it starts on the ground. We clean it. Up, press, down, lunge and up. It then comes down to the floor, up, press, down, lunge. Up, press, down, lunge. We should be finding this rhythm now. You've got to find this weird balance of being loose and being strong. Switch inside, we then move to the other arm. Again, it's a clean, that press comes down and lunge. And down to go clean, press, racked and lunge. And down. This is the last one and then we get a 30 second break. Aren't I nice? You see he's hating himself. But heart rate should definitely be up. Breathing rate should definitely feel like it's up to and I'm hoping that this stops 30 seconds of rest and then we'll go again. If you're finding that you have any discomfort out of these movements, stop and assess what you're doing. I don't want you to be fighting through pain. This should be something that we do because we feel good and that it should bring up the heart rate and the breathing rate. It shouldn't hurt anything too much. If you're feeling it, quads, shoulders, maybe a little bit in the back, that's excellent. Glutes, great too. Lower back, we might need to assess why that's happening. We're going again, deadlift position. Single arm, up and down off the ground. My glutes are squeezing every time I'm coming up to the top. Little helpful tip for the deadlift. Aim for your heels, 
as you're bringing it down towards the ground. We've got a couple of seconds left on this one, and then we're switching over. This is 10 seconds rest. I knew there was a 10 second coming up. A bit of a longer rest, uh, rest point. I'm going to show you what this looks like from a side point of view if you aim for your heels and then don't aim for your heels. So we come up, aim for the heels, it loads backwards. If I don't, it comes forwards and then my centre of gravity here is over my lower back. Puts a lot of strain into it. So we're aiming for the heels. Foot stays planted onto the ground. Under 10 seconds left on this one. We then go into that back row position. So again, this starts from the ground. We set up in that hinge position. If you need to, bring it off the floor with some books or a yoga box. Box, walk. Pull it in, it comes to the ground. Every time we tuck the elbow into the side. If you need some extra stability, hand can go onto the knee. We don't want to be rounded in the back. So the chest stays present and the shoulders stay back. I don't want to see people rowing down here. We've got to pop the chest up into it. Grip stays tight in that position. Again, we want to be set in a neutral position and not rounded forward. We go again, hitting that row. My feet are always squeezing into the ground. This is why I like not being in shoes, because I can feel the ground. The next movement that we go into is that clean position. Back should be feeling like it's really working and squeezing. Clean position comes up, snaps into point. This should feel more comfortable on this round. So from here, I hinge, pull out the ground and up. It's almost like we're going into a jump. And I'm snapping through. If you notice, every time I'm coming up to the top, I open up my grip. So you don't need to keep a tight handle on it. If it gets up to here, it's already sat. It's not going anywhere. You shouldn't feel this kettlebell banging against your wrist. If it's flying over the top, we need to work on this snap movement that comes into it. Okay, and then we go again into the opposite side. And again, it's this drive through with the elbow. This is why in that warm up, we primed that rack position to get ready for this. And we're meeting the kettlebell so it's not coming up into the air, we actually turn it when it gets to the shoulder, if a little bit under it. From there we go into this press position. So this is sat comfortably in the crevice of my arm, shoulders are set back, feet are tight into the ground. From there, presses overhead and back down again. And again, if you need to, put a bit of a bend in the knees to drive that overhead. If you can, keep your legs locked and firm, core stays tight, chest, uh, the rib cage stays down. We've got 10 seconds and then we'll switch inside. This will be probably the most fatiguing movement out of this workout. The higher up the body that we go, the weaker that we get due to like your calves, will carry you around all day. So that movement you can do time and time again. How often do you press anything overhead? That's why the shoulder press will feel a bit harder. Again, any pain or discomfort out of the shoulder, rest, stop, reevaluate, ask why you might be in that pain. From here, we come into that racked position again and we're going into reverse lunges. So set your feet up, again core stays tight, 
and we want to stay upright through this motion. I'm going to turn to a side so you can see this. So from here I come down and I drive up. Again, core stays tight and as if I'm stepping forward into my next one. Knees want to stay in line. Again, foot's planted into the ground and my back foot stays onto its toes. So we're getting a good stretch at the bottom of the foot as we do this too. Switch inside, another couple of seconds rest, and then we go again. Right foot sponsored this time. Okay, and away we go. I'm driving up. If you need a second in the bottom, I don't mind, a little pause to then drive up and through. But that knee has to stay stable on the way up and on the way down. So this will be working glutes, it'll be working as quad and working the stabilizing muscles in and around that area like adductors and glute meat. From there it comes down to the ground, clean, press, lunge position. Okay, in three, two, one. So we clean, press, down and lunge and it comes back to the ground again. From here my left foot stays planted. We shouldn't be shifting around all over the room. We want that stability into the floor. This is the last blast. So let's try and pick up that tempo a little bit. Three seconds. Down, 10 second rest, and then switch into the other side. And then we're done, and we're out. Okay, three, two, one, and away we go. It pops up, press, down. I start before the time there, that was good. Just eager. So you can start to almost get a little bit confident with this, and move just a little bit quicker. However, if that means you start to lose your form, slow back down again. We're not going fast for the sake of going fast, we're going fast to keep us form. That is as done as this kettlebell workout finished with full body, single arm movements. By the time it stops, we should be feeling glutes kicking, quads kicking, shoulders kicking, core's active heart rate and breathing rate up and we're done. That's been your sweat on session, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, ask below. Don't forget to give it a like, to give it a share, just generally let me know if you've enjoyed it. Peace.